Hello, my name is Bob Wong, and I'm the course director of the Masters of Environment and Sustainability. And for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so, I'm going to uh, give you a brief introduction overview of uh, our exciting uh, interdisciplinary program. I would like to begin by first acknowledging the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nations uh, and to First Nations peoples right across um, the continent uh, of Australia as the very first sustainability practitioners uh, of the land. So I want to begin by firstly telling you a, a little bit of a fishy tale about my own research background. I'm a behavioural ecologist, which means that I'm interested in understanding animal behaviour from an ecological and evolutionary perspective. And when I joined Monash in uh, 2006, I began what would end up being a 10-year research program studying these remarkable desert-dwelling fish um, called desert gobies that are native to the springs and rivers of Central Australia. And these fish have evolved to cope and survive uh, in a landscape of environmental extremes. We find them at temperatures ranging from 5 to 40 degrees, and in water that can be three times the saltiness of the sea. But unfortunately, in recent times, um, populations of this species and indeed some of their close relatives are facing uh, environmental challenges that they've never before encountered in their evolutionary history. And this view of one of my field sites, Ockenden Springs in Central Australia, really sheets home some of the problems that um, these animals are facing in the wild. You can see that the uh, spring-fed um, pools that these fish inhabit are also very important for watering livestock. And you can see that the margins of this uh, pool has been badly degraded by trampling by livestock, uh, which are also contributing uh, nutrients through their feces and their urine. And on this particular visit to this uh, field site, you can see that at some stage, a cow had also managed to get itself stuck in the mud and was actually in the process of decomposing directly into the spring itself. So it's unfortunate reality that um, humans have caused unprecedented changes to environments worldwide, and the reach of human activities have touched even the remote, most remote places on the planet. Uh, we can find disturbances in the middle of central Australia, but also in the world's deepest oceans, and even in um, places like Antarctica, where um, pharmaceutical uh, residues are now turning up in the tissues of fish and invertebrates living adjacent uh, to some of the research stations in Antarctica. And if we were to scan just uh, news clippings, uh, this is um, uh, just a, a, some examples of news articles that I uh, found uh, just the other day uh, on one Australian news website. And you can see that issues of sustainability and environmental protection uh, and management uh, are widespread. So here we have examples of some news stories um, beginning from left to right. We have an uh, example of Aboriginal land managers restoring a particular island habitat to pre-colonial conditions. We have um, an article about um, uh, eggs um, uh, or reduction in eggs on the shelves of supermarkets as a result of bird flu uh, affecting production. We've got an article about rising global temperatures and um, political ramifications. And also, uh, lastly, an article talking about uh, removal of offshore um, oil and gas rigs and what the environmental costs might be. So if you were to look at the media, it's easy to become uh, rather dispirited about the state of the world. But I would suggest that it's also an, a really exciting time to be uh, thinking about doing a program or a course in environment and sustainability, because it can also open up a world of opportunities. And the considerable interest around renewable energy and renewable resources uh, is, are good cases in point. So we are in a period of global economic, social and environmental change. And what we are looking for are leaders with a capacity to span different sectors, different disciplines, and of course, different national and international boundaries to make our world more sustainable. And this Master of Environment and Sustainability is really about layering expert knowledge in a specialization of uh, your choosing as a student with training and, exp and experience uh, in industry and that is supposed to be boundary spanning. And we are about training strategic leaders in business uh, across government, uh, the United Nations and beyond. And of course, a lot of our uh, units are deeply embedded um, uh, within the uh, sustainable development goals. So why should you choose the Master of Environment and Sustainability at Monash? Well, first of all, it's a genuinely interdisciplinary experience. It's the first um, cross-faculty master offering um, from Monash, and it's been highly successful because of the fact that it, it has 
um, cross-disciplinary uh, expertise teaching into the program. So we have uh, colleagues from the faculties of science, from the faculty of arts, and also the Monash Sustainable Development Institute uh, overseeing uh, various units um, throughout the course. And here are the members of the leadership team. So there's myself, um, the course director, and I'm based in the School of Biological Sciences in the Faculty of Science. We have Dr. Chris Lee, who's the course coordinator, also based in the School of Biological Sciences. And then we have the specialization leads, beginning first with um, Dr. Nick Deal, who's overseeing the environmental security specialization, and he's also based in the Faculty of Science. Um, through the Monash Sustainable Development Institute, we have Associate Professor Netta Boss, who's the Specialization Coordinator for the Leadership for Sustainable Development Specialization. And then lastly, we have Dr. Alyssa Waters overseeing um, the three remaining specializations out uh, of the Faculty of Arts. So we have Corporate, Environmental and Sustainability Management, we have Environment and Governance, and we have International Development and Environment. So I wanna now turn to the overall course structure. So the basic um, course uh, uh, is run as a two year full-time program. So this is known as entry level one, and there'll be 96 credit points for students to complete and they're spread across four different parts, part A, part B, part C, and part D. Part A is what we call the interdisciplinary foundation um, uh, that uh, is relevant across all of the five special specializations. So there'll be two core units the students would undertake. That is ENS 5010, uh, which is called Global Challenges and Sustainability. And we have ENS 5020, which is called Perspectives on Sustainability. So ENS 5010 is about evidence-based approaches of interpreting risk and uncertainty. It's about developing skills to integrate evidence into sustainability actions across different sectors, systems, and scales. While ENS 5020 is about multi-stakeholders and social structures affecting sustainability, and it's about understanding implications for policymaking, development of business cases, disciplinary research, and also action. Part B and C of the course are what we call the specialist studies. So here you would do um, the uh, various specializations uh, or units that tie into the one, one of the five specializations that are on offer as part of the master's program. So we have environmental security, leadership for sustainable development, corporate environmental and sustainability management, environment and governance, and international development and environment. And I'll go through each of these quickly in turn. So environmental security, as I mentioned already, is coordinated by uh, Dr. Nick Deal out of science. And it's about using scientific evidence and literacy to advance sustainability. And it's about guiding the management and protection of the natural environment. And there are specialist units that students will undertake as part of this particular specialization. Next, we have Leadership for Sustainable Development, which is coordinated by Netta Boss, run out of the Monash Sustainable Development Institute. And this specialization is about equipping students with skills to analyze complex situations and to identify interventions and solutions. And it's about guiding, influencing, and leading processes for positive change. Again, there are specific specialist units that students will undertake as part of this specialization. Next, we have the three specializations that are run out of arts, all coordinated by Alyssa Waters. So firstly, we have corporate uh, environmental and sustainability management. And this specialization is about exploring social, ecological, and economic challenges. And it's about leading strategies and initiatives in organizations. Again, there are some specific specialist units that are tied in with this specialization. Next, we have environment and governance, which is about understanding and enabling societal and governmental change, and it's about exploring dynamic processes and responsible action. Again, uh, we have uh, specific specialist units that are tied in with environment and governance. And then lastly, we have international development and environment. And this specialization is about exploring factors that transform social and eco ecological resilience. And it's about planning and implementing international development projects. Again, we have some specific specialist units tied in with this specialization. So going back to the question, well, why choose the Master of Environment and Sustainability? I think one of the real um, strengths of this particular program is the merging and meshing of practice with theory. And this is uh, uh, evidenced by part D of the program, which we call practice. Uh, and here students have a number of different options. Um, one set of options are for students to undertake um, some sort of a project or an internship. So you can see uh, that um, conveyed in the top part of this particular 
a slide here. So students can choose a sustainability consultancy project uh, that's uh, run through um, uh, Monash, but it's about helping solve a problem with an industry partner. Students might also partake in an environment and sustainability project. Or lastly, students might choose to do a sustainability internship in industry, so with the private or the public sector, and we can help to um, set up uh, those in internships, or in some cases, students might already have industry links, and we can help facilitate internship with an organization that the um, student already has um, some links with. Another uh, option for Part D uh, is the research pathway. So the this is a research thesis that students would undertake. Um, and so this would uh, take place in both um, first and second semester. So it's a year long research thesis. And this is quite appealing for students who might want to continue down a research pathway. And this particular research thesis could be a, a springboard for um, a subsequent PhD. I just wanted to share in this slide just examples of some of the uh, private and public uh, industry partners that um, we work with uh, in terms of the industry uh, uh, internships and also the consulting projects. You can see that there are uh, quite a range of different um, organizations that we do um, do work with. And I can say that Monash has actually partner, partnered up with many more industry partners than there are available internships for students to take. So there should be plenty of choice uh, that will appeal to, to everyone, um, irrespective of your background when it comes to a potential industry uh, internship. Now, earlier I spoke about the basic course structure, a two-year full-time course, which we call Entry Level 1, but we also have a few other options uh, based on uh, the background and experiences of the students that are enrolled into the program. So I want to go through these. So another option, which we call Entry Level 2, is to allow students to complete the master program in one and a half years instead of two years full-time. And this would be 72 credit points. And this can be achieved by getting credit uh, for Part B um, of the uh, course. So in this case, students um, who have done a degree where they've actually done subjects uh, that are relevant for Part B might be able to get a credit assessment to waive um, Part B for the actual master's program. An alternative is that those uh, of you who might have extensive experience already in industry because you're working uh, in, in, an area, in an area that's relevant to the master's program might be able to get credit for Part D, right? So these are two uh, different options for students who might be able to get credit assessment and complete the program through entry level two in one and a half years full-time study instead of the two-year entry level one option. And of course, there's also a third option, uh, which is what we call entry level three. And in this particular option, students might be able to complete the entire Master of Environment and Sustainability course in one year. Uh, so in other words, to undertaking 48 credit points. And they can achieve this by getting credit for both part B and part D. So all students would have to do if they go through entry level three is part A and then part C. So uh, another reason why um, you might consider choosing the Master of Environment and Sustainability here at Monash is the fact that um, it is a program that is, uh, has already seen through the completion of some 500 um, students since the development and inception of the program in 2017. And currently there's about 160 students enrolled in the program. And there's a fantastic uh, network of alumni that students engage with. Uh, so we do run alumni uh, events um, to provide networking opportunities for current and um, former students. And indeed, a lot of our former students continue to stay in touch and even perform mentoring and ambassador roles uh, to help um, guide uh, our current students. So in addition to the actual uh, curriculum, there is also opportunity for students um, who so choose to participate in a range of extracurricular activities. And we have set up a range of different leadership teams that you might consider being involved in, including MESA, which is the um, Mayor's Student Association. We also have a podcast team. We have an education for sustainability research team. We have a campus sustainability team, uh, which are involved in initiatives to make the campus more sustainable. We have a consulting team um, uh, linked in with Monash Residential Services. We have an entrepreneurship team. And lastly, we have a Mayor's social media team. 
And I just wanted to share with you the fact that, uh, as I alluded to earlier, many of our past students are still heavily involved and uh, they are involved, for instance, as alumni mentors. And you can see an example of just some of our past students uh, who are still heavily involved in the program, who can provide mentorship and advice to um, current students. So if you'd like to learn more about the Master of Environment and Sustainability, we do actually have a website uh, which will contain details around the entry um, requirements for the different entry levels that I spoke about in this short video. And uh, to find out more, I would encourage you to visit um, that website um, and you can see the um, actual address on this particular slide or feel free to email our role account and you can see the email address on the slide as well. So thank you for your attention and I look forward to hopefully seeing you enrolled in the Master of Environment and Sustainability here at Monash University. Bye.